Good morning. Welcome back, guys. This is our video lecture for Monday, April 13th. Let's get going. All right. So last week we had talked about kind of the origins of the Second World War. This week we're going to be talking about preparations and actually fighting the Second World War. Okay, so let's get going. Preparing for war. By early 1942, Britain had clearly chosen its strategy, right? We talked about the strategy of Europe first. Most people believe that the threat of Hitler was more pressing than the threat of the Empire of Japan. So finding a way onto mainland Europe, finding a way to neutralize Hitler really became the focus. Now, Churchill, Winston Churchill, who was the Prime Minister of Great Britain at this time, wanted the Allies to strike North Africa. In contrast, the Soviet leader, a guy named Joseph Stalin, uh, supported an invasion of France. In reality, both of those are going to come to pass. Okay, so moving on to the next slide. To arms in North Africa. The, the first strategy, the first real action that the Allies took did take place in North Africa. Okay, Roosevelt's top military advisor, a guy named General George C. Marshall, uh, supported this option, but the plan had two glaring problems. First, the U.S. Army did not possess sufficiently, uh, or rather a sufficient number of trained soldiers. It takes time to train soldiers. You, you simply cannot enlist and put them directly into battle. Another problem uh, were German U-boats. German U-boats were sinking hundreds of ships that were trying to make the passage across the Atlantic. It was a very dire mission to try and cross the Atlantic. Um, so transporting mass groups of soldiers and supplies into this region would come with heavy losses inevitably. Now in June of 1942, Roosevelt made his decision. U.S. forces would invade North Africa along with Great Britain and try to push them off the continent of North Africa. Again, the reason North Africa is so significant, not only to the Allies, but also to the Axis, is the immense amount of oil. Controlling the region, specifically the Suez Canal in Egypt, is vital for both sides when it comes to potentially winning the war. All right, moving on to our next slide. Ike and the Yanks. Dwight Eisenhower was commonly referred to as Ike. Uh, so, you know, that I Felt I'd put his nickname on there for you. Uh, in November of 1942, Allied forces led by the American general, Dwight D. Eisenhower, made sea landings in Morocco and Algeria, and then swept east into Tunisia. Right On the next slide, you're, you're going to see uh, really the, the battle maps that show the movement of the troops. Now, the Germans quickly sent reinforcements across the Mediterranean, while British forces defeated Rommel, uh, forcing him from Egypt. Rommel's Africa Corps retreated west towards Tunisia with the British in pursuit. Now, as you can see on our next slide here, if you look down in Africa, you can see where the Allied forces came in at Morocco and then pushed them across Algeria and eventually off of uh, the African continent. Okay, moving on. Uh, next slide. General Patton steamrolls through North Africa. During a series of battles in the winter of 1942 and 43, American soldiers saw their first combat of the war. Now, this was led by General George Patton and a man named Omar Bradley. These men helped uh, combined Allied armies launch a final offensive. And in May of 1943, uh, after which the Allied, or rather Axis resistance in the region had collapsed, uh, nearly 250,000, a quarter of a million uh, Axis soldiers were now captured by the Allies. This was a major blow uh, to the Axis' uh, ability to fight the war in North Africa and eventually to fight the war in Europe. So moving on to our next slide, the Axis begins to break. Using North Africa as a staging area, the Allies crossed the Mediterranean into Sicily. Now, Sicily is kind of the football of the Italian boot. We've all seen that on a map. Sicily is the large triangular-shaped island just off the coast of mainland Italy. Okay. Now, the massive Allied assaults in July of 1943 
met little opposition at first, and the success of the invasion scared Italy's political leaders. In fact, it scared them so much that the faith in Mussolini as a whole and his ability to lead the government uh, in any capacity almost overnight evaporated, right? Italy, again, remember, Italy fought with the Allies in the First World War. So many of those people who survived the First World War and lived through the First World War has ties to the Allies. It, it makes sense why Italy is going to be very unstable and Italy uh, is going to do what they do end up doing, all right? They're going to turn their back on the Axis and they are going to begin fighting against Nazi Germany on behalf of the Allies. Okay. Moving on to our next slide. Mussolini resigns. Italy declares war on Germany. Right? It's what I was just talking about. On July 24th, the Fascist Grand Council met and voted to restore the Italian king in Parliament. Mussolini resigned the next day, and Italy soon surrendered to the Allies. Its government signed an armistice in September, declaring war on Germany the next month. Now, by October, the Allied army had taken about one-third of the Italian peninsula. However, German soldiers were still there, and it made moving through Italy very difficult. Again, remember, Germany is going to fight for every stitch of land that they have. They do not want the Allies in inside German borders. So they're going to defend Italy with everything they have, okay? Moving on to the next slide, Stalingrad. Now, Stalingrad was an interesting conflict uh, just because of how Stalingrad happened, right? Hitler's hubris and his ego leads him to want to attack Stalingrad because Stalingrad, again, is named after Joseph Stalin, Hitler had Moscow within reach and then diverted millions of troops to Stalingrad to try and seize this city. Now, this decision was, was controversial uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, it's hard to imagine why he would have done this, especially, like I said, with Moscow in his grasp. Uh, but we'll, we'll get to that in a second, all right? So the de decision by the Allies to invade North Africa, uh, although good to push them away from the oil reserves, did have consequences. It left the Soviets on their own. And again, Hitler feels like this is his opportunity to push the envelope in the Soviet Union. So beginning in June of 1942, Axis troops pushed further into Soviet territory. Hitler split his forces so they could seize the remainder of the Caucasus region, again, essential for oil production, uh, and, and also take Stalingrad itself, okay, a large city located on the Volga River. But what Hitler did not anticipate was the ferocity with which the Soviets would defend Stalingrad. German firebombs set most of Stalingrad aflame, but Stalin forbade his soldiers to retreat. They could not retreat. It wasn't an option. Not a step back, Stalin said. And by mid-September, Axis troops had trapped a large Soviet force inside the city. Now, this fighting that took place in Stalingrad was ferocious. It was street by street. It was hand-to-hand -hand combat in many instances, right? Uh, the Soviet Red Army began a counteroffensive later that year and launched launched its defensive forces to challenge the Nazi assault. Well, in just a few days, the Soviets had successfully encircled the German troops, famously the German 6th Army. Hitler insisted that the soldiers fight to the death, and, and most of them would do that. In January of 1943, the remaining German force, starving and frozen, surrendered surrendered to the Soviets. Right. So in, in a lot of ways, yes, the Soviets themselves were able to beat the Germans into submission, but the Soviet Union, Russia itself, the weather itself was as big a part of the Germans' defeat uh, as the Soviets, right? Now, the Battle of Stalingrad cost Germany more than 200,000 troops. However, the Soviets would lose over a million. That's one thing you have to always consider when looking at the Second World War is the amount 
of extreme sacrifice the Soviet Union put forth, right? Nevertheless, the USSR forced the Germans to retreat and relinquish the territory they had gained after June of 1942. This is the turning of the tide in the Second World War. From this point on, you will have forces pushing north from Italy. You will have forces pushing west from the Soviet Union. And eventually, with our lecture tomorrow, we're going to talk about forces pushing east through France, right? We're going to talk specifically about D-Day. All right, so I hope you guys are well. I miss you very much. Keep washing those hands. Stay healthy. Stay happy. And I will hopefully see you soon. Have a great day. Bye.